that one. Thank you very much. All right, so stop the presses. Yes, that really is a burqa you're seeing on, I think, a Manchester woman. Uh, but I, I, after uh, taking this photo, I did actually go out and talk to these folks as they were leaving to see if I could interview them. And they were very nice. The woman on the left there uh, was not from the Middle East. I don't think she was of Middle Eastern descent. She just was talking like a normal American. Kind of hard to see her to tell what she looked like. But uh, I tried to get an interview with them, and we sort of uh, arranged to schedule one later. I just don't know what will happen there. They've got my contact information. If they call me, they call me. They were just in a rush to leave at the end. And for those of you who are wondering why I didn't ambush interview them the way I do government people, um, or people who are advocating for you know government expansion. These folks did not uh, say anything during the meeting. They didn't appear to be government folks, as best I could tell. So whether you have concerns about Islamic culture or not, I haven't gotten any sense that they've tried to help initiate force against you and me. So that sort of takes them off the ambush interview target list, if that makes sense. I have a lot more concerns about the average city council member than I do about a person just because they're wearing a burqa. It was kind of interesting though because it reminded me of a, another incident where I talked to somebody who was wearing a complete disguise. Uh, and, and you know, it, it's unfortunate that uh, people, this is part of the conversation that that I had with these folks, it, it was, you know, about, like there, I read, used to, I read this science fiction series, uh, I think it was called the Hyperion series, and one of the technologies that was just commonplace in this culture was uh, what they called privacy collars. If a constitutional amendment banning the burning of the American flag was passed, would that amendment cover an American flag made in China, yes or no? The person would basically just put on a little necklace type thing and it would make your face unrecognizable to people who were looking at you. So you'd supposedly be able to go walk around and hiding your identity. This was apparently a society with a great deal more freedom than American society has because although, I mean, that woman is able to get by wearing a burqa. She gets hassled some, I think. Uh, but uh, there are, I mean, you'd have the police called on you if you went around, uh, you know, in, into a grocery store with a V mask on or if you uh, had a, uh, you know, something like this guy's wearing. He got away with it because he was at sort of a festival and it was near Halloween. And he was around a lot of free staters. Uh, this was in downtown Keene. Anyway, just wanted to let you know, I didn't let these two leave without at least trying to get an interesting interview on the Ridley Report and hopefully one will happen later. All right, so they're going into a non-public session now. The public's being kicked out. This time, for whatever reason, they have not closed the uh, the outer doors, you know, to create an airlock against the people. It's just the, that one set of doors that's closed. What are you arresting this man for? You've seen the dramatic liberty arrests in Keene, New Hampshire. Now see 111 reasons why you should move there and reinforce these gutsy activists. Keene's advantages are compelling and the list of reasons to move has just been updated. For details, visit freekeen.com.